In this video, we are going to create a simple Polaroid project. So this is just going to be an image that looks like one of your photos is in a Polaroid. And it's a pretty simple project, but it uses a lot of tools and functions in Photoshop that you will find yourself using. And this is a great way to kind of get anyone started with using Photoshop. So I'm gonna go over a number of different things and they might not all make sense immediately once you begin using Photoshop, but just try to follow along or watch the video and then try the project after you've watched the video, whatever works best for you. But uh, I am gonna show you a couple of different things. So we're gonna be jumping around a little bit, but the purpose of this is just to kind of show you all the different things that you can do with Photoshop. Now this is, of course, isn't everything you can do with Photoshop because this is a very big program and it allows you do, to do a lot, but it will show you some of the common tools and features of Photoshop that you can use in your projects or designs. Now, another thing to keep in mind is this isn't the only way that you can do this project inside of Photoshop. There are multiple ways to go about creating the same type effects, and I know a better way to actually do this project, but it gets a little more involved into an intermediate and advanced level, and I want to keep it just kind of basic so you can start understanding how the program works. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to open up three files and we're gonna create our project from those files. Now, you can use any files that you want. So we're gonna have a background image and you don't have to use this background image. You can use any background you would like. And we're gonna use, I'm going to use a photo of me, of course, but you should pick a photo of you to try out so that you can do this following along with your own photo. Now, if you don't have any photos of yourself and you just wanna follow along, I will supply the photo of me so that you can follow along also. But, you know, feel free to make this your own and make it unique. So I'm gonna go over to open. And here we have the three files we're going to be using. So we have the Fern image, Jeremy image and the Polaroid image and we're going to bring all these in if you hover over them It'll show you the information. This is 1920 by 1279 This one is 1920 by 1080 and this one is 1581 by 1920 so different sizes, but that's okay If you just click and select you can select all of those there and then just go ahead and hit the open button It'll open that up for you and then if this is the first time you've used Photoshop, it should look similar to this. If you've used Photoshop before, uh, you can continue working with your own workspace. However, if you want to reset your workspace, go to the top and click on Window, go to Workspace, and then make sure Essentials is selected. And if it's not selected, and if it doesn't look exactly like this, you can click Reset Essentials, and it will reset it back to this layout so it's a little easier to follow along. Now, the first thing I want to do is create a little more room in Photoshop. And the great thing about this program is it allows you to move around and adjust a lot of things in the program. And that includes these panels over here. I don't need all these panels open. I don't need the libraries or the learn panels. So if I just click on those, right click or shift select, then I can hit close and I can close this one out also. And because this is a fresh preferences and fresh install of Photoshop. It's giving us all these tool tips. We'll just exit them out whenever we see them. And now closing those panels have given me a little more room that I can work with in this document. So here we have polaroid.png. This is a PNG file. You'll see it's an image of our Polaroids we're going to work with. And you see these checkerboard patterns in the background. And that just means that the background is transparent. It's not white. It doesn't have any information. It's just blank. And if we hide that layer, you can see this is all transparency. And you see the transparent background behind it. We'll uh, deal with that in just a minute. If you're not sure what that means, that's okay. Then we have our photo. Hopefully you brought in a picture of yourself. I brought in a picture of me here that we can use. And then we have our background image. Now this one is called Fern, but you can call it whatever you would like. And you see when it brought it in in Photoshop, it labeled it background and locked it down. That means we can't really do any edits on it unless we change it into an edible layer, which we're not going to have to worry about. We can just leave this as is. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to bring over these images into the Fern document so that we have the ability to work all in one place. Now we have 
three separate images here at the top, but we want them all to be together. And we can do that with what's called layers. Layers in Photoshop allows us to stack things as if you were stacking a three layer cake. We can put things on top of other things and work with our images that way. And that's what we're going to do. So the first thing that we want to do is let's grab the file of yourself or of me. And over here we says it says layer zero. So it made the first image a background layer. This one it just called layer zero. If we click on that and we drag it, you see the hand changes and we can see the image being moved. And what's great about this is that I can take this over into the Fern document by hovering over that tab. And then when I come back, we see a white box highlight in the area. And if I let go, it'll drop that image right into that document. So that's great. Now we have a move tool over here in the tools bar. We can click on that. And then with that layer selected, we have the ability to move this layer around wherever we want, which we will do in just a moment. But for right now, let's just go ahead and hide that. So there's a little eyeball next to that layer. It says layer one, and we're going to click the little eyeball to hide it. And we can rename this layer. If we double click on it, it'll allow us to put a name in. So I'm just going to write Jeremy. And now let's go ahead and bring in the other image. So we're going to go to the Polaroid file. And here we're going to do the same thing. Click on its layer, hold and drag over to the Fern tab, come over into the document and then let go. And it drops that in there for us. And we'll go ahead and double click and call this Polaroid. And we can hide that. Now, what is important here is that the Polaroid doesn't have a background. Remember it was transparent? Well, all we see is just the Polaroids and that's exactly what we want. Whereas the file, the photograph file has a background. I'm not cut out of this background. There is an actual background there and that's okay. We'll just use the background in this photo. That doesn't matter. But the important thing is that the Polaroid doesn't have a background. So it looks like it's actually sitting on this table. Well, of course, this is way too big and we need to move it around. So let's go and adjust that. But before we do, I'd like to go ahead and save my file once I get to this point, and I like to go ahead and close out any images I'm not using. So let's save this first. If we go up to the top and we click on File, and we go down to Save As, don't do Save because it will save it as the fern.jpg file that we're working on. We don't want to do that. We want to create a Photoshop file, and that'll keep all the layers and information for us so we can come back into justice later on. So click file and then go to save as I'm going to click on that. And then we can just go ahead and call this whatever we would like. So I'm going to call this Photoshop project and then I'll click on the save button. And it says, do we want to keep maximum compatibility on? Let's just hit OK. We do. And now you'll see the name changes at the top from fern.jpg to photoshopproject.psd. So that means that we are now working in a Photoshop file. It will keep all of our layers and whenever we save, we can have this file to work on. Later on, we'll save out an image of the finished project and I'll show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and close out these other tabs. So we have the jeremy.png file open. If we hit on the little X button in that tab, it'll close that out. And as long as we don't make any changes, it won't ask us if we need to save it. So we'll click on Polaroid and we'll exit that out. This one, uh, we did move or do something and saying, do you want to save these changes? And we're just going to click no. And now we're back to our file and I just like to keep a tidy workspace and not have a bunch of tabs open I'm not using and I like to name things to make sure I know what I'm working on. So now we're back here and let's go ahead and start editing this image. This picture is way too big and we need to bring it down and move it where we want. If we have the Polaroid layer selected, not background layer, but make sure you have Polaroid selected and we go to the top to edit and we go down, you will see where it says free transform. If we click on that, you're going to see these handles pop up around the image and it's going to allow us to transform or move or rotate this image. Now we can't really see all the handles. You can see the ones at the bottom are not in the frame here. It's not in the document window. So let's zoom out so we can see this a little better. If you go to the top and you click on view and you go down to zoom out, 
it'll zoom out so we can see the whole document here and that's just a little easier for us to work with. So now what we can do is we can grab any of these handles and if we grab a corner, it will squash and stretch and scale this image. So we don't want to do that. I'm going to undo that. So go to edit and click on undo. And it will undo that edit for me. So anytime that I make any mistakes, that's how we do that. Edit, undo. Now it's going to say redo because it wants to know if we want to redo that action. But we don't. We want to undo that action. And we can also click here in the document and we can move it around. And if we want to, we can also rotate this document. I don't want to rotate it, so let's undo that. But I do want to move it and I want to scale it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this document kind of over to the side where I want it to be. And I'm going to type in the scale. So if we go to the top, we see an options bar for the transform that we're working on right now. We see the X and the Y coordinates of this document. We see the scaling of the width and the height. So you can see they say 100%. We see rotation values and so on. We want this one that says width 100% and H or height 100%. There's a little link button and we want to click on that. That way they move together. And then we can highlight this and just type in a number like 70. So that's 70%. That's how much we scaled it down. Now you can click on the handles and you can try to uh, get that scaling just right. But if it's off, you can type those in manually and make sure they line up so it keeps a scale. You don't want one being lower than the other or at least link them so they go down together. So I'm going to click and now I'm going to drag this into place and just kind of see where it looks nice. So this might be good right here. And whenever I get the scaling and the position where I want it, I'll just hit the enter key and that will save that transform for us. So now we've transformed, we've scaled that down, we've got it into place and now this is starting to look good. If we want to go ahead and save this file now, we can go to the top, click on file save and now because it's an actual PSD file, when we save this, it will save the PSD file, not the original image file. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to get an image in this photograph. So how are we gonna go about that? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and turn on the Jeremy layer. So I'm gonna turn on its visibility. And when I do that, you can see how layers work. So everything here is stacked bottom to top, just like you see in the layers panel. So first we have the background. The background is on the bottom of the layers panel and it's on the bottom of the stack. You can see it's behind everything. Then we have the Jeremy layer, and that layer is second in the stack. It's above the background layer, and it's above the background image in our document window. Then we have the Polaroid layer, which means it's at the top of the stack, and it's at the top of the images. You can see it's sitting on the top here. Well, we have a little bit of a problem. We can move these layers around. So if I click on the Jeremy layer, and then I hold and move it, up, I can drop it above the Polaroid layer, but then because we have this background and it's not transparent, we can't see the Polaroid anymore. It's still there. If I hide Jeremy layer, that is still there, but this image is covering that up and that presents a problem. So what we can do is let's hide the Jeremy layer for a moment. We are going to cut out a piece of the Polaroid where it's black here and delete that information and then we're gonna stick the Jeremy photo behind it and we'll do a little couple of extra things to make sure it fits in the square. Now again, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but I'm gonna to try to show you the easiest way to go about this. So let's leave the Jeremy layer hidden for now and we're gonna click on the Polaroid layer because that's the one we want to work on and we want to actually delete out the information. Now, if I hide the background layer, you can see that we have those transparent checker boxes and we can see where there's transparency in this image. What we want to do is delete this black layer and show transparency so that we will see whatever's behind it. So let's turn on the background layer. And the first thing we need to do is we need to select this black area of this Polaroid. Make sure you're on that Polaroid layer or this won't work. Go over to the tools bar and if we hover over the fourth icon down, you will see that we have the quick selection tool. And if I click 
on that and hold down, we can see two tools in there. We have the quick selection tool and we have the magic wand tool. You can use either one. They're both going to work here, but I like the magic wand tool. I'm going to click on that. And if you don't see that, just go down to the fourth icon, hold down, and then you'll see them both pop up here. So I have the magic wand tool and we have some options at the top, sample size, tolerance, and so forth. We want kind of a higher tolerance. This just means how well it's going to select the piece that we want. Go ahead and change this tolerance to 50. Now, later on, uh, you can learn about how the tolerance and everything works, but it's basically saying how much do we want to select of like colors. And we want to select all these black colors in the center. When it gets to the white, don't select any of that. So we want a higher tolerance. Once I have that number set, I'm going to hover into this black area and click one time. And now you see these little marching ants that we like to call them going around or marquee selection. And it's basically just showing us what we've selected. We've selected this black area and it's creating this uh, box around that area that we've selected. That's exactly what we want. Now we can hit the delete on the keyboard and delete it out. Or if you want to go to the top and go to edit, you can click on clear and it will delete out that information. And now we can see what's behind it, which is this background layer. So that's kind of cool. Let's get rid of these marching ants. If you go to the top and click on select and then go to deselect, it will remove those marching ants for us and we can see what's happening here. So we've deleted out that information and we're seeing the background. If we hide the background, now you can see instead of black, we see transparency. So we're gonna see anything that's behind this image. That's great. So let's turn on the background and now let's turn on the Jeremy layer. Well, this still isn't right because Jeremy layer is on top and we need it to be behind the Polaroid. So we need to move it down in the layers panel. If I click on this and I go down underneath the Polaroid, now you can see that we are seeing that image behind the Polaroid because we've deleted out this information. We still have a couple other problems, but we can fix those in just a moment. But let's go ahead and get this image centered up where we need it to be in the Polaroid because this isn't right. We need to be smaller and it needs to be over here. So make sure Jeremy is selected or your photograph is selected in that layer. Go up to the top again, go to edit and go to free transform. And we're going to have these markers again. So that means that I can drag this and I can get this in the photo, but it's too big. We need to scale it down. Now I can click these handles or I can type in the scale if I know it. But if I click and it starts squashing and stretching, it presents a problem for us. So if I hold the shift key, it will lock the aspect ratio and make sure that it looks perfect as it gets smaller. If I don't hold the shift key, I might have this issue where I'm squashing or stretching and even if I try to make it look good it will give us a problem so hold down the shift key and then continue to kind of move that in place so I'm just going to get it here so that's pretty good uh, however we need to rotate it because uh, this if you look at the Polaroid it's actually sitting at an angle on the desk and we want the picture to reflect that so we want these lines to line up so if I go to the corners and I go not on the corner but outside of it my cursor turns into two arrows with that are kind of bent this is for rotation if I click and drag, now I can rotate this image around. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it until I can see that it kind of has the same angle that the Polaroid has. And then again, I can move it or I can scale it or try to get it into place. Now, if your image is bleeding off the sides, that's okay. Just try to get yourself centered up in the Polaroid. And then once we have that, hit enter to save that. Now the next issue is of course that we have this falling off outside and we see my background coming out from underneath the Polaroids and we want to delete out that information. Well that's easy. We can just select it and delete it. Make sure that your image piece is selected and I'm going to go over and now I'm going to go to the third icon down and it's the lasso tool. If I click and hold down, I can see all of the lasso tools. And I want the second one, the polygonal lasso tool, which will just make us uh, do a selection with straight lines. So I'm going to let go. I'm going to go in between my photo and the background. So I don't want to cut away my photo, but I do want to cut this background out. And we're working on just this layer. So when we make a cut, it's not going to affect the rest of the image. So just real quick, 
this is what's going to happen. Let's undo that. And let's turn those back on. So we just want right here, I, I can use this white border of this photograph and the outsides of the background to cut away. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go down and I'm just clicking and it's making these straight lines for me. I'm going to click and make this square. And then I'm going to come back to the first selection I made and the icon turns into a little circle. I click again and now it completes that and makes a selection for us. With the Jeremy layer still selected, I hit the delete button or go up to edit clear and it's going to delete that information out. So now if I hide those layers, you can see what has happened. I've actually deleted a piece of my photograph out, but that's okay because the Polaroid is sitting above it. So we want to do the same thing. This time I'll just leave the background off so maybe it's a little easier for you to see. With Jeremy selected, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to cut out this piece of the background that we don't want. And then I'm going to hit delete and there it goes. Now let's get rid of that selection. So go to select and then deselect and we'll turn the background on. And this looks really good. This is exactly how we want to look. I might want to move this around if I need to. I can move this layer and just give me a little headroom there at the top. All right, so this looks really nice. Let's go ahead and save this. Go to File, Save. And we could go ahead and save this out, this image if we want to, but I like to take it a little step further and make it, you know, pretty nice looking and, and show you a couple more things that we can do. So let's change out the way this image looks. If you look at this background and you look at the photo, they, they don't really go together. And I would spend a lot of time making sure this looks better. But in the case of uh, not keeping you here too long, let's just do a basic adjustment on the image so that we can make it look a little nicer and more uniform with the rest of this photo. Now we want to affect just the Jeremy layer. So we don't want to change the background or the Polaroid, just, just the Jeremy layer. So make sure that the Jeremy layer or your photo layer is selected and then go down to the bottom and you'll see some image adjustment buttons. Now this one here that has like a uh, two uh, a circle with uh, half black and half white, we'll click on that. And this gives us some layer image adjustments. And this is a great way to make edits for our layers. And we have all kinds of different ones. Now for you, maybe you can select the photo filter for yours. You can click on that. And then what this does is it applies a filter as if you had a camera lens on. You see the density is kind of low at 25%. If I crank that slider up, you can see how it changes the photo. So what we can do is we can pick any one of these filters. Maybe we can do like a cool filter and then we can adjust the slider and kind of get how it's supposed to look here. Now, one problem that we're having though is it's really selecting and changing everything. It's changing everything that's beneath it. It created a new adjustment layer. We can see it's called Photo Filter 1. And not only is it affecting the Jeremy layer, but it's also affecting the background layer. And that's not what we want. We don't want the background to turn blue. We only want it to affect the Jeremy layer. If you go in between the two layers and you hold down the Alt or the Option key, so Alt for PC or Option for Mac, it turns into a different icon. It is a square with this down arrow. And that's basically a clipping mask. And what it says is only affect the layer beneath it. So I'm holding down the alter option. If I let go, you'll see it turns into a hand. But if I hold it down and I go in between those layers, it turns into that icon. If I click, you see the layer changes. It gives a little arrow pointing down. And now it's only affecting that layer. So as I make these adjustments, it's only going to affect the layer beneath it and not affect the background layer. And that's really what we want. So now you can apply any of these cool photo filters. Say we do a sepia and we want to make kind of like a sepia looking photograph. We can do that. We can click on color, click on the color there, and we can actually change the color around. So maybe we do something a little lighter, but still kind of a sepia effect. We can affect that here and we can turn it up and it looks kind of like an old timey photo. I'm going to do a different one. We'll do the same thing. I'll just show you another one in case you want to try a different adjustment. Just click on that photo filter layer and drag it down into the trash can and let go and it'll delete it for us. Now make sure you have your photo selected, Jeremy. I'm going to do another adjustment. This time I'll just do like a brightness and contrast. You can do whatever you would like. We only want it to affect the layer beneath it. 
So hold Alt or Option and click on that so it makes a clipping mask with the arrow pointing down. And now when we adjust the brightness and contrast, we can see it affecting in the photo here. So we can play around with this a little bit and kind of make it look like it sits in this photo a little more. So the photo is a little darker. We can maybe darken it up, bring up the contrast just so it pops a little more and do any kind of adjustments that we like. So this looks really good. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sign our photo. You can do this a number of different ways with a brush, with a Wacom tablet, but we're just going to use text and make it nice and easy. We need the text to sit on top of the Polaroid layer. So we have our background layer, then we have the Jeremy layer that's behind the Polaroid layer with this cutout, and then we have the Polaroid layer and we want the text to sit on top. That means we need to go select Polaroid layer in the layers panel. And then that way when we put the text down, it'll come on top of that. Now go over to the toolbar and click on the big letter T, that's for type. And click into the white area of the Polaroid. So I'm going to click here and it's really small. We're going to have a hard time seeing that. So let's go ahead and change the point size. Um, we're going to start off just real big and we can change it as we need be. So change that to 200. Make sure that your color is set to black. You can change a different color if you need to, but make sure it's set to black. And let's make sure that it's center aligned. So now we can go ahead and I'll type my name. And of course, we're going to have to make some adjustments here. If I go and I select the move tool in the tools bar and get out of the type tool, it will go ahead and put that layer down. And you can see that it actually named that layer, whatever we wrote. So because I wrote Jeremy in the text, it actually wrote that as the layer name for the text layer. So now we can move and adjust this however we want. I'm just going to go ahead and, and move this here for now so we can see it a little better. I don't like this type. Let's change that out. So with the text layer selected, go back to the type tool. And as long as we have that text layer selected, we can make changes without clicking in here. And if we go to the top, we can see we have different fonts. So if I click on this, all these different fonts pull up. And as I go through, you can see it's changing. So you can go in and find a font that you want. So I'll scroll through here and see what we got. And I think I'm going to use freestyle script, which kind of looks handwritten. We'll click on that. That looks really good. However, it is it is a little big. Uh, even if I move it, it's going to be real tight on this photo. Let's bring down the font size a little bit. So still with that text layer selected and the type tool selected, it's at 200. Let's maybe say, let's try 180. And then we'll hit enter to save that. It's still a little big, so let's do 160. And that looks good. So we're going to click the move tool. And we're going to move this. Now we have the same issue kind of that we had before. This font looks good uh, because it's cursive. So you can't tell how crooked or straight it is. But if you're using like a serif, sans serif or something where it's nice and straight, it also has the same problem that we had before. It needs to be rotated so it matches the Polaroid. So once again, with the text layer selected, go to edit, free transform, and then click till you are and then go until you see the double arrows that are bent, click, hold, and then you can rotate this around. And with this tool selected, we can also move it into place so we can scale it, move it, or do whatever we need to do. And that looks pretty good. We'll hit enter to save that. All right, so now the project is pretty much complete. You can do more to this. You can uh, change the text, the fonts around, switch out the background. If we didn't like this background, we could go ahead and hide it and bring in another background and stick it at the bottom of this layers and see how that looks. We can change out our photos, but basically that gives you a good overview of a lot of different things that Photoshop can do. We've looked at images, we've looked at layers, we've looked at adjustment layers, we've looked at editing tools, we've looked at different tools in the tool panel, and we've looked at typography and so forth. So hopefully this project gives you a good understanding of how Photoshop works and all the different things you can do with it. Let's go ahead and save this out. So we're going to go to file and we're going to click save. That saves out the PSD file, but what if we want to go ahead and upload this image? Well, we need to save out an image file. A PSD file is not an image file, it's just a Photoshop file. So we need like a JPG, a PNG, a BMP, a GIF, or something like that. Well, we're just gonna say the typical JPG file that you would see on the internet or uh, whenever you're you know, sharing uh, pictures on social media. 
So go to File, go to Save As, just like we did before. And now this time, let's go ahead and click on the Save As Type, and it shows Photoshop PSD. We're going to click on that, and we're going to go down to the one that says JPEG, and in parentheses it says JPG. That's the one we want. We're going to click on that. You can name it whatever you would like. I'll just leave it Photoshop Project, or you can call it your name or whatever you would like here. And then we're going to go and click on Save. And then it's going to give us some options. JPGs are compressed file sizes. So it's basically saying how much do we want to compress it. Just leave it at the standard options. That's fine. And hit OK. And now you have two files. You have a Photoshop file that you can come in and manipulate and edit later on. So we have all the options. And then if we open up the JPG file that we just created, you can see that this is an actual image file. And because it's an image file, it compressed or it flattened all of those layers. So you can't edit the layers in image files. It's just a single image. But now you can share this or uh, upload it or whatever you would like with this image. So hopefully you liked that project. I hope it was entertaining and you learned a lot from it. And yeah, that's a Photoshop in a nutshell. So have fun with the program. It's a great piece of software.